Good morning and welcome to Worship with Aldersgate. It's so good to see you tuning in this morning. And for those in the room, welcome. We are glad to have you. Today is a particularly special day. Every Sunday is a good day, a uh, great day to be in church. But today is a, a date of personal significance to me and I think to the church community as well uh, because we're acknowledging um, 20 years of ministry of uh, my pastorate here at this church. And it's kind of hard to believe. Well, thank you. People want to clap. <laughs> We had planned on spending three years here, <laughs> so God had other ideas. And what a, what a real privilege that is. A lot of pastors don't get to experience that, and it's just really been a joy to be on this adventure this long with you. So uh, we celebrate that. We celebrate the presence of the Holy Spirit with us that binds us together as a church community today as we worship. Uh, with that, I'm going to ask you the question of the day. And first, remind you that if you have a prayer requests this morning, some of you spoke with me before church or sent me a text, um, but you can also drop those prayer requests in the Facebook comments, and I'll get those at the end of the service to make a prayer of the people. The question of the day is, when was the last time that God made you say, wow, 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 good, wow. When was that last time? Think about that, and we'll begin with our opening song. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and happy 20th anniversary, Rachel. I'm glad you just stuck around more than, 20, uh, more than three years, sorry, um, because you have been a wonderful inspiration in my faith journey, and I'm sure you have been for a lot of people here, so thank you. Everyone, let's stand and join and sing in the opening hymn, Blessed Assurance. Oh! <laughs> 
Amen and amen. It is time for the children to come forward. Come on down. And reminding the adults of the question of the day today, when is the last time God made you say, wow, wow. That's how my friend here likes to say wow. Wow. <laughs> how are you ladies? Doing good. Good. Well, thank you for coming here. I'm glad that you could be here today. Are you glad to be here today? Yeah. Yeah. You look a year older than the last time we sat here together. I wonder why. I wonder why. Oh, somebody had a birthday. I wanted to uh, tell you a story this morning that um, is going to fit into what I'm talking to the adults about. Um, but first, have you been able to go outside recently now that the weather's pretty nice at night and look at the stars? Not yet. Not yet? Okay. But you have, Liz? Yeah, I was looking at the stars. Last night was such a beautiful evening, um, you know, just it was really cool after a hot day. And I looked up at the stars and um, I saw the Big Dipper and I saw the Little Dipper and that's all I know of stars. So that's what I can tell you that I saw. But it's so beautiful to look up and to see them. And it's amazing to think that we can only see some stars because of all the light that surrounds us in our neighborhoods and stuff, but there's even more stars, amen, um, even more stars beyond that. And it's like, I think it's pretty natural for humans anywhere to look up at the stars and feel close to the presence of God, right? Because you have that huge, magnificent scale that you can't even comprehend and more stars than you could ever count. It's like a holy experience. It might be a time when God made you say, wow, Right? Right. Well, that's true, too. So it makes you think about time. He was saying that, that by the time we see the light of the stars, some of those stars have already burned out. Right. So it makes you think about time and space and your mind just goes, Phew. wow, did God create a beautiful thing? In um, Genesis chapter 15, it's talking to us about the story of Abraham. And when Abraham, one of his big significant moments with God was when he heard God talking to him saying, Abraham, I'm going to make of you a great nation. You're going to have so many descendants, you can't even imagine it. And Abraham was like, really, God? Because I don't have any kids. And not only do I not have any kids, I uh, am old. And my wife is old. So how do you plan on doing that? And God says, I'm going to do that, Abraham. And he takes him outside and he shows him all the stars. And he says, your descendants, your children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren, all the way, are going to be as many as these stars. Now, that's sort of, that's unbelievable, right? That doesn't make any sense. Like, God, how are you going to do that? I do not see how we're going to get from where we are now to that plan that you're telling me about. But this is what it says in Genesis 15. Uh, this is verse 6. Abram believed the Lord even though it seemed impossible. And God credited this to him as righteousness. And that's a fancy way of saying that this made him right with God. The thing that gave Abraham his relationship with God is that he believed God, even though God told him, he said, you know, this amazing thing's going to happen, it seemed impossible. He believed God, and it made him right with God. And what's important about that is that we don't know if Abraham had a good day or a bad day. And we don't know if the next day um, he might, you know, think a bad thought or have a fight with his sister or something like that. It didn't say Abraham behaved himself and he was perfect and then God loved him. It said Abraham trusted God and then God loved him. And that can be very reassuring for us imperfect people, isn't it? Not just you, me, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he trusted God with something that seemed really hard to believe. Wonderful and hard to believe. All right. So, um, number one, please go look at the stars, maybe tonight. And number... What? Yes, you can. And number two, trust God. 
Even when it seems like, how on earth is that going to happen? God's saying, with God's help, anything can happen. Yeah. All right, let's have a word of prayer. God, thank you for giving us faith, for helping us to trust you. Even though we're imperfect, God, we know that this faith is what makes us right with you. Deepen our faith. Increase our faith. Help us to love you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty, Miss Beth, where are you? Come on down. When I say come on down, I'm hearing the prices, right? Right. You are the next contestant on our Let's Read the Scriptures uh, showcase. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Beth Connors, and I am co-chair of the administ administrative board. Today's reading from, is from the Galatians, chapter 3, verses 23 to 29. Now, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be reckoned as righteous by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Thank you, Beth. Can you grab that water for me? I'll wet my whistle before I start whistling. Truth be told, I can't whistle. One of my life regrets. I married a guy who could whistle, though, so that's just as good, right? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, question of the day, when was the last time God made you say, wow, wow? Let's have a, a word of prayer. Wow, God. <laughs> wow, on a day that, um, for me, I, God just considering being here 20 years, um, not at all what we had planned or expected, but yet this is what you planned and brought forward. I give you thanks. I give you thanks for this church and um, for your faithfulness and your comfort and your encouragement and your energy of the Holy Spirit. God, you make us say, wow, a lot. Help us to consider these words of Scripture and apply them into our lives so that we might share this grace and this love, this joy, this wow with others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Does anyone want to share? If you're on Facebook, I'll look at the comments later. You can write a little story about when the last time God made you say wow was. But does anyone want to tell me? Yes. Beth. Spending time with a first grandchild at the beach. Wow. Yeah, go ahead, Jan. Yeah. Yeah. Being out in nature, in particular uh, Hawaii here, waterfalls. <laughs> or seeing the pictures of Hawaii. Okay, that's good. Any other wow? Yes, Albert. <laughs> the Red Sox are in second place. <laughs> he can't believe it. He couldn't resist saying it. Yeah, that's okay. Good for them. <laughs> that's great. So just a story. Um, actually, coming out of last weekend, I was away last week at my 25th college reunion 
uh, back in Northfield, Minnesota. Um, I even picked up back some of that Minnesota accent while I was out there. I started to hear it to creep in a little bit. Um, and just, you know, you go back to any reunion, if you've been able to go to a high school reunion or college or family, anything, and you're going back there to see people, of course, right? Uh, to reconnect, to see how people are doing, to share how you are doing, maybe to see a place that, that's lovely to you, uh, that reminds you of things. And it also helps you connect back with yourself at different times in your life, right? It's kind of like touching the past a little bit. And we had a wonderful time. Sam went. Um, he's now become an honorary member of my class because he won the entire trivia game, the whole class, along with the class of 1990 or 2002. 30 trivia teams, 30 trivia teams of pretty smart people. Who wins? My husband. Isn't that? Why don't you give him a hand? That was pretty great. <laughs> I, and I said to my classmates, I've married well, look at this. He didn't go here, but he could have. So that was great. Visiting with people, enjoyed it so much. We were there in a familiar place, too, walking along hot corridors of you know, the campus. The, because it's Minnesota, a lot of the buildings are connected because it's very, very cold a lot of the year. You know, so walking along those familiar places, it was wonderful. We stayed in a dorm that I did not live in, but many of my friends lived in. It was great. So that's where I was last weekend, thinking that I was reconnecting with people and with places. I'm going to back up just a minute and tell you a story from my junior year of college to help this make sense. I um, grew up in the church. I've told you this. A lot of you have heard this story, but grew up in the church, forced to go to church every single Sunday of my entire life, right, until I left the house. Oh, my gosh. And then uh, went to college. And, you know, I mean, I went to church to see people I knew and loved and because, you know, my parents expected me to go. And then when I went to college nobody was expecting me to be at church on Sunday mornings. Plus, knowing me, I was up very, very late on Saturday night, and Sunday morning came a little quick, and so I wasn't exactly hopping out of bed to go to church. And so I didn't go to the church services on Sunday morning for the first couple years. And if you'd asked me, Rachel, are you a Christian? I would say, yes. Do you believe in God? Yes. I just wasn't doing the faith practice activities such as going to church. My junior year, I met a really cute guy, and his name is Josh, and I got to see him last week, and he's still kind of cute, wouldn't you say? Or at least compelling. We'll say that he's compelling. Okay, Sam agrees. He's a nice guy, married to a wonderful woman. Um, and he, at the time, was an evangelical Christian, and, um, w you know, we got into conversations about faith, because I said, well, of course I'm a Christian. I go to church all the time. I'm United Methodist. My parents were missionaries. And he's like, yeah, but, you know, and he would talk to me about his faith. And I just remember this one night. We stayed up all night, we all night talking about faith, about the way that he perceived faith, about his view of the Bible and the way that I had experienced faith and I viewed the Bible. And it was just this, you know, one of those life, as it ends up, life-changing conversations. And so, you know, I was pretty tired there, even at that young age, having stayed up until the dawn in this conversation. And it was time to go home. Actually, it was a few hours past time to go home. But I walked down the stairs and out of the front door of that dorm, and the sun was just coming up, and in front of me, there's a chapel off to the right and these trees and some other buildings. And the sky was this beautiful pale blue that it is early in the morning. And there were clouds in the sky with just a little pink sunlight from the sun that was rising. And for the first time, walking out that door after that long conversation about my friend's relationship with God and considering my relationship with God up to that point, when I walked out that door and I saw that sky, it was like vibrating with energy. Like the whole world looked different. It looked like the trees had energy in them. It looked like the grass had something. It was like I hadn't seen. It was like a layer had been taken away from me. And all of a sudden, I perceived a real and living God in my life for the first time. I will always point back to that long, long night discussion and, that, and exiting that dorm and that view as the point at which I accepted my faith for my own. 
now I'm going to cry. I'm going to try not to cry. We can cry. Crying is strong and powerful. We like crying. That's right, Robin. I'm working on myself. Um, last Sunday morning, I was staying in that dorm where my friend lived on the first floor. And I woke up early because the sun was in my face and it was kind of warm, no air conditioning. And I had to preach. I was going to preach to my classmates or an alums at the memorial service. And it was 5.15, regrettable. I wanted more sleep. But I was wide awake. And I thought, well, let me see if I can find a cup of coffee. Not the first time I'd wandered down that hall in pajamas, by the way. Um, I, I had matching pajamas, in case you were worried about me. Anyway, so I start wandering down the hall looking for coffee, none available yet, by the way. And um, went in the bathroom, came out, looked in the lounge at a memorabilia. And then I thought, I'm going to go see how hot it is. It was very warm in Minnesota last weekend. I'm going to go see how hot it is. And I stepped out the front door just to get a sense of the temperature. And I saw the same sky same light blue sky with the chapel and the trees and the clouds that were turning pink. It was the same view. It's the second time I've ever seen it, right there. And I was like, oh, <laughs> wow, like, you're here too. <laughs> you know, I came here to visit my friends, my, my classmates, and here just to have that experience almost a second time. Over 25 years later, it was just tremendous. What a gift. And um, so, of course, I rewrote the beginning of the sermon to tell them this story, too, and I'm so glad to tell you. I was recounting this story to a clergy friend of mine this week, and, you know, kind of by way of apology, I was saying to him, it was just a really profound moment. I mean, it didn't have, like, any theology in it. It wasn't like reciting the sinner's prayer. You know, some people say, what does it take to come to faith? And, you know, you need, you know, and we understand why, but a lot of times there's a lot of words with that, like accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior and confessing your sin and accepting new life and repenting. And for me, there were no words. And so, you know, and I was saying to my clergy friend, I mean, it, it wasn't like that, but it was this really big moment. And he said to me, you know who that reminds me of is Abraham. When Abraham heard from God about what God was going to do with his life, had a real experience of God, Abraham who did not know God intimately prior to this, and God says, I will make your descendants as many as the stars. Abraham goes out and looks at the sky and believes. No big theology around all that, just belief. And that's what gave Abraham righteousness in God's sight. That's what lined Abraham and God up together. That's what reconciled them is Abraham's faith in that moment. Just real quick, that, that ability, that, ability that, that impulse to feel like religion or the practice of faith is something that's very formalized and very wordy, is something I'm certainly susceptible to. That's why I was apologizing to my pastor friend. It wasn't really like a conversion because it didn't have words on it. We all have this perception that the life of faith, especially as soon as you walk into the doors of a church, includes a long list of like rules and obligations and do's and don'ts, and there's this certain formality to it. And, and if you're going to practice a religion, it means kind of like stepping into you know, something very formal and, and, and more rigid. It doesn't feel as free and open as maybe that moment at the beach, Beth, or, or looking at pictures of Hawaii, Jan, or marveling at athleticism. Albert, that's what we'll call that Red Sox comment. It doesn't feel as free and as natural, right? You step into the, the, the confines of the building or the practice of faith, and all of a sudden there's all these rules and descriptors all around it. I think that a lot of people that we know around us don't do uh, life with a religious community because that has been their experience, that as soon as you come inside, now you're good, now you're bad, now you need to do this and you can't do that and you've got to do it this way and not that way and this is what the good people do and this is what the not good people do. And the thing is, all of it comes or should rightly come just 
from the experience of that moment of, wow, God is real. That ought to be the root of who we are, not coming in here practicing being correct about things, but like, wow, I think that there's a God, and I think that God is favorable towards me, and I don't know everything of what this means or where we're going to go together, but I want to follow that. And so we follow that, and so we meet Jesus, and so we see Jesus' example, and we hear this message of eternal life, which means we don't have to fear death somehow, and about new life here while we're on earth. But that's just part of the journey that starts with, wow, wow. I want you to do me a favor. The next time that you are talking to a friend, the, 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 the polling and the statistics about religious practice around this area tell us that very, very few people are active in communities of faith, but very, very many people believe in God and have these experiences of, wow, all the time, but they don't feel comfortable coming into the life of faith because they've learned in a, in a faith community that it becomes strict and formalized and constraining. Will you, the next time that you have a conversation like this with a friend who's talking about how, you know, they believe in God, but they don't go, you know, to church or to practice their faith because, you know, it's of all the problems and everything. Will you tell them that this is a community that is organized around that experience of Wow, that's all you need to come in this door. Wow. And then we hear about who Jesus is and about new life and forgiveness of sins. And we say, wow, I want to know more. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know all the answers. But this is real, and I want to see where it leads me. Because in this place, if these people, if all of us are people who are full of that just gratitude and appreciation for the presence of God in our life, what a wonderful thing to surround yourself with others who believe the same, others who see themselves as on a journey, like Abraham was on a journey, not knowing the end, not knowing every detail, but just coming together and saying, yes, we believe, and we want to see what God is going to do with us, and yes, we believe in Jesus, and we want to see how God can make us more like Jesus. That's all it takes. Will you be a witness that there are faith communities that are not restrictive and rulesy and yes and no and right and wrong and stand and sit. Will you let them know that they can come here? Will you let them know that this is a place for them to say wow and then just continue the journey alongside you and me? It was such a gorgeous moment last Sunday morning. I am so grateful that God was present to me 26, 27 years ago in that moment, just the same as God was present to me last Sunday, just the same as God was present to me this morning. Wow. Amen. Now Johnny's going to wow us with his uh, music. <laughs> Is that right? Yes, yes, yes. Of course. So we have a, a relatively unfamiliar hymn, but it's really popular, well, not popular, but it's familiar, well, not familiar, what word am I looking for? It's easy to learn. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, so let's join and stand in singing, Jesus, I Come. By the fourth verse, um, we should be singing out. All right?
you, Jenny. All right, perfectly according to plan. For those of you who may just be tuning in this morning, um, today is a special celebratory morning uh, celebrating 20 years of my appointment uh, to ministry at this church. And so we're having a party. For those people who are in the room, uh, we've got special uh, snacks and things like that. We're actually, because it's awesome and to do this, having two parties. Uh, one is this afternoon because um, that anniversary is July 1st. And then the other is September 24th, and that'll be back when we're all back in town and everybody can come and it won't be so hot and things like that. So two parties. First one is today, so we're getting out just a little early to move to that time. Um, and, and because we are on schedule, um, what we'll do, just so that the people in the room know, is we'll sing our last song, but I would like for you to stay in your seats and not move to refreshments yet because we will be hearing two reports about uh, the annual conference that was a couple weeks ago up in Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, these are just brief reports, but our delegates, Noah Spicer, Daniel Helm, and Savannah Helm, uh, have given us just quick words so that you know what they did on your behalf and what happened in that meeting. So we'll hear that. Then we can have refreshments. Our church conference will start at 11.30 on Zoom. So if you're at home and would like to join in, you can do that. Uh, we will Zoom that meeting. The church conference is to install the new leadership year, just to review the changes, see if there's any more nominations from the floor, and then uh, vote to receive that slate. And then we have one more action as an administrative board, Beth, that I will just lead. One quick action to vote on as a church. Doesn't that sound like fun? A party and then a meeting. It is so Methodist. Amen. All right. So next Sunday and for the rest of the summer, we will be worshiping at 10 a.m., 10 o'clock, half an hour earlier. Okay? We're starting early. At what time? 10. 10. Okay. Broadcast 2 will be at 10. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to be over with Pastor Rick and the Congregationalists up the hill. Uh, he's in charge of that worship service. We will not be in this building. We will provide the link uh, for people coming in remotely to the Congregational Church's YouTube page so you can watch that service. Rick and I are going to preach a dialogue sermon, which should be a whole lot of fun. Rest of the summer, 10 a.m., all the way through and including Labor Day. Mm, the other announcement. Oh, Maine. The Maine mission trip is the last week in July, July 24th. That's a Sunday through the Saturday, July 30th. I think we have 30 people going on the trip this year, which is pretty great. That includes seven from another church, um, so 23 of us and then seven more. But we've got more room, so if you want to come, uh, please come talk to me. And that'll be great. You need to tell me that you're coming and submit those uh, deposits for housing and food by July 10th. So two weeks. Yes, Bob, what do you have to say? Yes, we will be collecting money to help pay for, like, the shingles and the wood and the nails and things like that. Uh, right now, through the donation link, there is a category called Main Mission Trip. You can donate there. Um, there will also be a GoFundMe that allows us to share on social media. Um, that will go up starting around July 1st. So yes, please, if you're not able to attend but you want to support what we're doing, um, we need to raise $2,750, I think, $2,750 to pay for supplies that we'll use during the week. Thank you. Okay, I think those are all of our announcements. Um, for celebration and thanks, um, one more time, I'm going to thank the uh, Staff Parish Relations Committee just because they're such a good support to me. Thank you, Vinny. Um, to, to me and the other staff of this church, but in particular for putting on this little shindig today um, and planning one in September. It means a lot to me and hopefully um, is strength building for the church too. Not many churches get to have pastors who stay this long, right? So good on you. Good on us. Let's say hooray. Thank you, SPRC, for throwing the party. All right. Oh, a new dog. It's always good to get fun announcements in the, uh, in the prayer requests. Let's be in an attitude of prayer. God, we thank you for the many gifts that you give us every day. God, even for today, for the gift of health and strength to get up and come out or to get up and tune in 
um, to be part of this community that encourages us. God, may we always be a group of people who marvel at how wonderful you are, at the reality of your presence with us and your love, at the example of Jesus, your son. God, may we always begin with wow. God, we have many prayer requests in our community, some that only you know, and so I lift those to you first. And to them, I add prayers for those who are struggling with and in recovery from addiction, God, and for those suffering from mental illness, depression, and anxiety. Lord, we ask for healing and for relief. Send helpers, God, and help us to be good friends. We pray for those who are grieving loss, also continuing in prayer for Marie LaRose's friend, Marie Patrice Mass, uh, in hospice care, and for Jill Wilkinson with health struggles. God, we pray for those with long COVID and those impacts. We ask God for provision for David Hahn, our incoming music director, this August, and for Young Gook, his husband, who is looking for a job as a florist. God, we're asking specifically that you would help him to find a job as a florist and provide them housing. We pray for Lana Davies' friend Pam, who is struggling under multiple family tragedies. God, just give her strength and give her hope. There are many joys among us today for uh, the summery weather and, again, the ability to travel. For the life of Sheila Shedd's aunt, who's passed away in comfort for her loved ones. God, I thank you for wise, committed, creative, dedicated church leaders, um, those who have served and those who will be bringing in in this next leadership year. We celebrate with Dee and Brad Kaimak as they welcome a new dog, Peggy, to their family and ask that she settle in easily. And again, God, today we uh, celebrate the blessing of having uh, Pastor Rachel as our shepherd and friend for 20 years. God, you've heard these prayers. Now we ask that you would hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's all join and stand singing, Breathe on me, breath of God. 